subject today. I spent a number of years with a cloud computing customer experience a solution that we sold. We were B2C business selling to organizations that uh, touched hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of consumers. And it's an overused cliche that suggests that the, you know, the customer is in charge. We all know that now. Now it's a cliche in boardrooms, but it's, people start to wake up. But also, I think, second is feedback is a gift. And I think it's insecure companies, uh, like bullies on a playground or insecure, would have these uh, anti-disparagement clauses. And you know, welcome to the free markets and the internet. Let's compete and let the consumer have its voice. And I think, frankly, it tends to be a bit condescending to consumers to suggest that uh, the consumer can not, I think consumers can weed through. They kind of see the folks are a bit unhinged, perhaps things that are true and aren't false. Let the consumer sort that out is, I guess, my view on it, recognizing there still is a problem with companies, some companies posting false claims to prop it up and competitors posting claims to disparage. But having said that, I can tell you from Montana's economy, Viewpoint tourism is one of our largest businesses. There, second, it's four billion dollars. Eleven million people visit our state, and they're going online. They're booking trips. They're relying on online reviews. I spoke to a small business owner just a couple weeks ago in kind of an obscure place in Montana. I said, "How was your summer?" He says, "Best summer ever." I said, "Why?" And I was expecting to say we had a big marketing campaign. He said, "Online reviews. They people went and they found us." Uh, by the way, Yellowstone National Park has a 4.5 out of 5 rating on Yelp. Just a little a hometown um, advertisement there. Um, anyway, I, I guess, though, I'm curious um, about how we ought to approach fake online reviews. If there's a thought on best practices, whether it's businesses that are paying for positive reviews or competitors who are writing false negative reviews, Curious, what, uh, what if you could share maybe some best practices, policies, procedures that you would recommend that we should be used to combat fake online reviews? Please. So, I think a couple of things. Your first point about consumers becoming more sophisticated, and this in some ways infantilizes them. Consumers are becoming more sophisticated. People know there's bad reviews and good reviews, and so I, th I think as people get more comfortable with the internet economy. They'll, they'll be able to sift through that. In terms of what companies are doing, there are certainly companies like Yelp and, and I'm sure others who have very, very sophisticated algorithms. They have employ software engineers and data scientists to really be able to use technology to flag these, uh, these, these reviews that are at a high risk of being false and then taking them off automatically. So there are companies and there's technology now that companies are employing that just simply those reviews never will be, don't get posted. Yeah, please, Mr. Goldman. Um, I'd like to first uh, point out that uh, e no matter how big the problem is with fake reviews, anti-review clauses are never the solution. They have, so this particular bill, I think, is orthogonal to the concern about fake reviews, although I think it's a legitimate concern. But I want to stress how important this bill is, irrespective of whatever concerns anyone has about fake reviews. Um, but I think with fake reviews, uh, we should recognize that consumer reviews are still a relatively new phenomenon. We can take them back maybe as far as 20 years ago, but really uh, the modern consumer review economy is maybe a dozen years old. And if you think about it in those terms, we're seeing the um, evolution of review sites and developing better and uh, more aggressive man techniques for managing consumer reviews. And in the end, they are the solution. Um, we need to have trustworthy platforms that are for consumer reviews. And I think that we're seeing improvement on that front every day. You know, I, I worked for Procter & Gamble for that for, for 12 years. You think about, I mean, this is incredible, valuable data. This is what you used to pay a lot of money to focus groups for. And now we get it virtually real time, unedited, right at the coal face of the, of the uh, consumer experience. And that's why I think we had, yeah, these disparagement clauses, I think we're in agreement we need to deal with that and remove the anti-disparagement clauses based on a lot of stories and Ms. Palmer's story here as well. But this is part of the new economy. This is a gift, I think. If you want to become a world-class company, uh, embrace it. Mr. Medros. I, I, uh, Senator Daines, uh, we see over and over again stories like uh, you told, um, businesses in, in remote places and places that consumers wouldn't have thought of traveling to or wouldn't have had the, uh, the, 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 um, the, the courage to travel to 
pre-internet. And, uh, and in fact, the best businesses leverage a platform like TripAdvisor to embrace consumer reviews, to use it as a free marketing tool, to encourage people to share their opinions and set their expectations of what that trip is going to be like so that you feel safe to venture to some of these more remote places that are amazing experiences all around the world. We hear this story over and over again from business owners. Uh, what makes that possible is the scale of our platforms, the free uh, ability for consumers to share those opinions without the threat of being sued or bullied by, by owners who may not like every piece of feedback, and the best businesses take that feedback on an ongoing basis and make their business better. They, they improve their service, they change things about their property, they remodel, they, they use that as a, a feedback tool that otherwise companies would have paid millions of dollars for in the past. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Danes. And in our line of work, we get plenty of feedback. So <laughs> we do. <laughs> I'm gonna really, I'm really going to Yeah. I'm going to yeah, embrace I, embrace I, the idea that it's it's a gift. I'll stay off I'll, I'll stay off of your Facebook, you stay off of mine, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank you. All right.